Bradford City Chaplain I'd like to welcome you to today's service of remembrance again uh, we are doing this service online we're still in unusual times uh, but we come today to remember the events of the 11th of May 1985 to remember the 56 lives that were lost that day and to say as a club that we will never forget we will always remember we saw the very best of Bradford people that day when a day of celebration became a day of absolute devastation. It's particularly poignant to me as my own dad as a clergyman on Homewood for many years was asked to receive the bodies um, by the head of the ambulance service. And I remember him getting back that night, I don't know, half 11, 12 o'clock at night and through my bedroom wall, just hearing him sob as he retold the sights of that day. I remember him going down the next day to pray with various police officers and I know that the sights of that day were just horrific. We know that the people of Bradford rallied together in so many different ways and personally I was so proud the last time we met at Centenary Square a couple of years ago to see hundreds and thousands of people gathering together to say that this is the part of the narrative of our city as a Bradford person to see so many people not just people my age and above that would remember the fire, but to see so many young families and children decked out in their Bradford City kits to say that we will never forget. We will always remember. As a club, we do that today. We will never forget the 56 and the lives that were impacted that day. We want to think today particularly 
of those people that we've lost ourselves this year. And we uh, particularly want to remember Paul Firth, who was a lifelong Brit of Bradford City fan who, who died recently. He wrote a book about the events of that day called Four Minutes to Hell. And we remember him as we remember the 56, as we remember all those that were injured and as though we remember all those ourselves that we have lost this year. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks ever so much. God bless. Good morning. I'm Councillor Doreen Lee, the Lord Mayor of Bradford. I'm very pleased to have been able to join you today. For the second year, we come together, not physically, but in spirit, to mark one of the most special days in the district's calendar. Today is filled with memories. Memories we cherish of those that were lost on that bright spring day 36 years ago. They left home to enjoy an afternoon's football and never returned. C.S. Lewis, writing about the death of his wife, vividly described the enormity of the loss. Her absence, he wrote, is like the sky it spreads over everything. For those who grieve, every day brings countless small moments of remembrance. Birthdays, anniversaries, bring their own poignancy. Our grief is not only for the lives lost, but for the other losses the tragedy brought, the loss of hope and the loss of future, the loss of promise. We inevitably ponder what might have been, but we also hold dear the relationships that we shared and hopefully we can draw strength from that. When we draw close to one another, as we normally would do on the 11th of May every year, our pain isn't lessened, but we can take enormous comfort from being together in our sorrow. Even as we join together online, knowing we share a sense of loss, we will all hope bring some more solace to those who still, lie, who still live with the pain and for those who still bear the scars. I was reminded recently that Her Majesty the Queen, who is now herself in the depth of loss, once spoke of grief as being a price we have to pay for love. There are two sides to the same coin. It's a bittersweet truth that we cannot have one without the other. So let us remember today 56 gentle people who were taken from us that afternoon. People who loved and were loved. People whose lives enriched ours. Let us remember all those who were injured, those who cared for them, and those who were terribly affected by what they experienced. As we come together this morning, we remember all those we lost, but we also remember with gratitude the love and the joy they brought into our lives. The city of Bradford will keep on remembering and commemorating in our own way. Thank you. A reading from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Blessed be the Lord. For he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I said in my alarm, 
I am driven far from your sight. But you heard my supplication when I cried out to you for help. I'm standing in front of the Bradford Fire Memorial plaque in Bradford Cathedral, and it tells us two things about that day in May 1985. It tells us shockingly that 56 people lost their lives and that 300 were injured. But it also tells us that four and a quarter million pounds was raised to respond to an appeal. That's over 10 million. Uh, in current money, and that that money went towards the Burns unit at the Bradford Royal Infirmary. Loss and generosity, a sudden loss, unexpected loss. For some families, they lost more than one family member. Generosity is often born out of wanting to reach out, to do something, to be compassionate in a situation, to, to respond to the needs of human beings. And in this past year, so many families have experienced sudden loss, not just in this country, but around the globe. And yet we've also seen this wonderful outpouring of generosity, of volunteers coming forward, giving their time generously, of those in our hospitals working sacrificial hours in order to cope with the demand. And of course, the wonderful exploits of Captain Tom and others who've raised funds for the NHS. In the reading that we heard from Psalm 31, the writer is having a nerve wracking time. Uh, we think that he's probably been under threat of death himself. Uh, and he talks about God as a rock as refuge, as a strong fortress. These are strong images of stability, uh, of not being moved. And this is how he's experiencing God in this moment. And then we have this statement of trust in God. Into your hands I commit my spirit. It's interesting that centuries later, Jesus, as he is dying on the cross, uses the same words. But within the Christian tradition, we know that those were not his last words. The, there was another word that was spoken. He is risen. Even in the face of tragedy, there is a purpose in this life. There is a better word to offer. And under God, that's all about living generously. At this place of enduring memorial, let us bring to God, in whatever way we feel able, our thoughts and feelings at this time. Let us pray. We remember the lives of all those who died in the fire of 1985. We give thanks to God for all they meant to us and for the ways in which their lives enriched our lives. We also give to God all that might have been and our continuing sense of loss. We pray for all those caught up in the disaster all those years ago who still carry the scars in their bodies and minds. We pray for those who were bereaved and all those struggling with sorrow, praying that each person might know the lights of God's presence peace and hope. We give thanks for the medical developments that grew out of the tragedy and continue to pray for the daily work of the Burns unit, the paramedics, the police and the club staff. We pray for those who take part in sport and all who support them and pray for their safety and protection in both this country and around the world. We give thanks for the people of Bradford and especially for the community that live around the stadium and who opened their doors in compassion and service that day. We give thanks for the city of Lincoln 
and we pray for their civic authorities, for their football clubs, for their shared concerns and their well-being, for mutual understanding to grow so that burdens may be shared and our cities bound together as places of hope. We pray for one another, for the days that lie ahead of us, that we may use them wisely in the service of God's and others. Support us, dear God, each day of our lives until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then God, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last through the love and mercy of God. Amen. We gather our thoughts and prayers together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us honour and pray for all those we remember this day as we hold silence for a minute. Lincoln, bringing our heartfelt best wishes to you all as we remember 36 years since the dreadful Bradford fire on the 11th of May 1985 and the 56 people who died and the many injured. My husband Chris and I have been honoured to attend the Bradford Memorial Service for several years and I was very moved by the families and friends laying flowers for their loved ones who will never be forgotten and for the children many of whom carried a, fla a single flower who will never be able to meet them. Lincoln football supporters still talk to me about the awful tragedy of the fire, of the loss of Bradford friends and with the Stacey West stand they continue to remember Bill Stacey and June West, who were lifelong fans of the Lincoln City Football Club. My prayers are with you all. I would like to thank the Deputy Lord Mayor of Bradford for laying flowers for the people of Lincoln. Although the virus has kept us apart for another year, we very much hope that we will be with you again next year.
The 11th of May 1985 should have gone down in history books as one of celebration and joy for the people of Bradford and indeed Bradford City fans around the world. 36 years have now passed since 56 football fans sadly perished at Valley Parade football ground in a match between Bradford City and Lincoln City. This was a significant and poignant incident in the history of West Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service and we are still proud to this day of all the firefighters who tried in vain to fight that fire and ultimately save lives on, on that tragic day. We should remember the bravery shown on the, on the day by other emergency services too, the police, the ambulance and indeed the humanity and heroism of other football fans on that day along with club officials and players who tried desperately to help people. Once again we pay tribute to the 54 Bradford City fans and two Lincoln City fans who died that day and we also remember the hundreds of, hundreds of supporters who were injured as a result of the fire. It is important to us as a fire service along with the people of Bradford that we keep the memories alive of the 56 and we continue to mark the occasion each year. I also feel it's important to remember that football grounds across the country and indeed the world are a much safer place now as a result of this tragedy. Just like last year, COVID has meant that we cannot come together as a city and, and pay tribute in the, usual, in the usual way, but I know people will still pay their respects in their own special way. I'd just like to finally say that today our thoughts and prayers are with the 56 fans who lost their lives, their families, both football clubs and everybody affected by this tragedy. Thank you and take care. Hello. My name is Jane Whitehouse and I work for Yorkshire Ambulance Service as the Group Station Manager for Airedale, Bradford and Leeds. On behalf of everyone at the Trust, we mark the anniversary of this tragedy by remembering the 56 people who lost their lives and the hundreds injured in the Bradford City Fire 36 years ago. It was a devastating incident for the city and for British football. As an emergency service, our staff are used to responding to difficult incidents, but some of those remain vivid in the minds of those who attended, and this is one of those incidents. We will never forget those who perished, and our thoughts are with their families and all those affected by this disaster. Thank you. On the 11th of May, 1985, 11,076 supporters travelled to Valley Parade. Fans were from Lincoln, fans were from Bradford, fans who never expected the day to end as it did. Now it should have been a day of celebration and instead at 3.44pm tragedy struck. Of the 11,000 people who went to watch a game of football, 265 received injuries, 56 never returned home. The Bradford fire is etched into the memory of the city and it's incumbent on us all to remember them and the fate they suffered that day. Now this has been a year of suffering, of turbulence and of tragedy, but it's important that we take a moment to stop and to reflect the fate of those who left to watch for a game of football and who never returned home. It's important that we pause to reflect on those who suffered physical or psychological injury and that we stop to give thanks to the selfless efforts of those heroes who put themselves in harm's way. The terrible events of that day will never be forgotten and our thoughts with those who were affected. Hello everyone, I'm Ajay Mahajan, Professor of Plastic Surgery and Director of Research at the Plastic Surgery and Burns Research Unit at the University of Bradford and consultant plastic surgeon at Bradford Teaching Hospitals. The past year has been very challenging for all of us. Although we call the pandemic the COVID-19 pandemic, we're already in 2021. And unfortunately, the effects of the pandemic are going to be felt for years to come. Ironically, this is very similar to the situation people had to face when the Bradford fire disaster happened. Although the immediate treatment for those affected was completed over the following months, the after effects continues to influence our lives to this day. We lost 56 lives that day, but countless other lives were affected for years to come. 
We take this opportunity today to remember the hard times that the Bantams have faced. We support them by being there for each other. We have kept the memories of those affected alive through the work we do at the Plastic Surgery and Burns Research Unit at the University of Bradford. During this last year, we paused our work in the labs in the university to provide the additional manpower, woman power that was needed at the Bradford Royal Infirmary to deal with the pandemic. We have, however, continued to keep the Bantam's academic flag flying high by doing the academic work in whatever free time we had to complete various projects. We have published our work and continue to present our work at various international meetings in the virtual format. I'm very grateful to everyone who has supported our work through various fundraising activities in spite of the challenges that the pandemic has posed. We now look at the future with a renewed hope for better times. As we have done in the past, together we will get through this too. God bless and best wishes for the future. So let's receive God's blessing. God bless the survivors, the families of those who lost their lives, all those who continue to carry the physical and mental and emotional pain of those events 35 years ago. May God bless you with his comfort and his presence. God bless this great and precious city Bless Lincoln, bless Ham, and those other places represented here virtually today with God's peace and prosperity. God bless all of you and all those whom you love, living and departed, this day and always. Amen.